Welcome back to Forecast Lab. A little bit of a change into fall with a very wound up low pressure area in Ontario. A little bit quiet in the tropics. Let's take a look at the NHC products. Right now is the peak of tropical cyclone activity in the Atlantic and not much evidence of that. We've got a potential area formation well southwest of the Cape Verde Islands. However, the GFS graphics, the isobars, the integrated vapor transport, showing that potential area of tropical cyclone formation way out there in the Atlantic, drifting slowly westward about 10 knots and approaching the windward islands around Wednesday midweek and just not much development that just remains a easterly wave. And it continues into the Dominican Republic late next week and just not much sign of formation. And you remember a few days ago, it was bringing a possible hurricane up in this area. It is not showing that right now. The very latest GFS, the 18Z run, don't have all the frames in, but uh, goes up to 66 hours. That's taken that subtly track towards the uh, Windward Islands and probably is gonna have a similar outcome. The detrimental effects graphic and some of our other charts have been showing that dry air will be the main problem. Hurricane Lorena is gone. The monsoon charts shows the remnants of that circulation off Baja, California. A lot of moisture has already been sheared off that system, making its way through Texas this afternoon. And that will quickly exit the area over the weekend and looks a lot drier there in the southwest deserts than we had been expecting earlier. And we come under the influence of ridging and increasing prevailing westerlies going into next week. And out in the Pacific, Hurricane Kiko. I did downplay that back on Tuesday. However, it did intensify to 115 knots, making that a low-end Category 4 storm. It should peak later tonight at 125 knots and then should start weakening. It does not currently appear that there's going to be a threat to Hawaii as it will diminish significantly and move to the north. The GFS track does match the official NHC track. And that puts Hawaii under the favorable part of the storm. Weaker winds drier air and less of the precipitation field. So at this time, unless it tracks further south, not much effect on Hawaii. Here in the U.S., the surface map showing that cold air flooding south. Temperatures this afternoon in the 50s across Minnesota and 60s all the way down to Chicago, down to Kansas City and 60 at Wichita. Now, there's not going to be a huge southward push, only 10, 16 millibars in that high pressure area. And further up north, we're struggling to get 10, 21 millibars. So most of the influence of that will be heading into the northeastern U.S. This cold front will advance into the northeast rather slowly due to the meager high pressure back behind it. But by Saturday and early Sunday, it should clear most of the northeastern U.S. Highly modified air coming into the southern U.S., Temperatures will still reach the low 80s and maybe the 70s if you're lucky. And of course, it will not move west of the Rockies. We look at the mid-tropospheric chart up at 500 millibars. This is always the key to what's going on. And we've got this large Hudson Bay vortex, low pressure aloft. That's a barotropic cold core low across Ontario. So very showery conditions and lots of cold air aloft. We have this large long wave ridge across the western U.S. into the eastern Pacific, a cutoff low south of Alaska that's shearing off and drifting southeast. And as we run this through the weekend, you can see the changes. One short wave moving through the Great Lakes that's associated with a burst of cold air advection, which always lowers the upper level heights. And there it goes. As we go into Monday and Tuesday, upper level low off the northwest coast and it will remain stormy through midweek in that part of the country. And we go into the later part of next week. Ridging across the central U.S. so a return to warm weather once again but 
little bit unsettled in the western part of the country. And we take a look at the northeast part of the country this afternoon. Temperatures were in the 70s and 80s. We were seeing 83 at New York City and 90 degrees at Washington, D.C. However, a massive surge of cold air coming in from the west. And as you go back into Michigan, 60s and even 50s up in the UP of Michigan and highs even in the 40s across the arrowhead of Minnesota. The Storm Prediction Center calling for a slight risk of severe storms across the upper Ohio River Valley into eastern Kentucky. An isolated tornado may be possible, but the primary risk, gusty, damaging outflow winds. Looks like at the current time, not very much going on. Maybe a couple of very small showers out there in eastern Kentucky may be becoming thunderstorms at this time. And a sneak peek for tomorrow. A slight risk from Portland all the way through New York City and down towards Philadelphia. Pretty much the same risks as today, an isolated tornado, the primary risk, gusty, damaging outflow winds. In the southeast, a definite downturn in thunderstorm activity, less of that air mass stuff we had a couple weeks ago, but some big storms in western Tennessee where we have an extension of that slight risk. Looks like a really big one just south of Jackson. And a few other storms further south, just east of Atlanta, other storms across the Carolinas, and of course our usual air mass storms in Florida. Not really any severe risk on that. In the Southern Plains, an extension of that severe risk as a marginal risk into the Red River Valley and in parts of North Texas. Maybe a few embedded storms right there northwest of Fort Worth. We'll take a look at the radar. Maybe I'll just throw that on there. And there it is, clusters of embedded showers and storms all the way from Gainesville back to Graham, Seymour, and additional showers and storms on the Caprock from about Amarillo to Silverton. Other showers and storms in the San Angelo, Abilene area and extending into the Sanderson area. This is all remnants of Hurricane Lorena, all being dragged eastward by the strong westerlies. Other areas of storms further to the west, we'll cover that shortly. For the time being, however, hot weather across Texas, 100 at San Antonio and Austin, 97 for Dallas, 95 for Houston, so summer does continue. However, cold air is advancing through Oklahoma, the Panhandles and Arkansas, and it should clear this entire area by tomorrow, should be heavily modified, but at least that will bring a change to the weather. In the Northern Plains, extensive cold advection with that classic cold air advection cloud pattern, this is all cumuliform clouds, rather shallow, but all this area being heavily impacted by the cold surge, especially in North Dakota, highs in the 50s there and 60s from Chicago to Kansas City, Wichita, Dalhart, and into eastern Colorado as well. Northern Minnesota under a frost advisory tonight, temperatures will fall to freezing. That extends as far south as Canyon, Hibbing, Bemidji, and Red Lake Falls. A freeze warning is in effect for western North Dakota tonight. Temperatures down to 29 degrees, including Dickinson and Williston. Central North Dakota under a frost advisory that includes Bismarck and Minot and extends into northwestern North Dakota and into northeast Wyoming. In the southwestern region, extensive cloud activity, some remnants of the monsoon and the remnants of Lorena. In the Rockies, we're seeing some cool conditions, 69 degrees at Denver, 62 at Colorado Springs, and west of the Continental Divide, much warmer with highs right back up in the 80s. Much cooler, however, in the southwest deserts, only 96 at Phoenix and 95 at Las Vegas. Flood watch continues in the New Mexico Sangre de Cristos for Saturday. Storms will continue and produce excessive runoff the northern Sacramento Mountains around Rio Doso and Capitan also in that flood watch for Saturday. The rest of the southwest free of any advisories or warnings, but some very strong storms in central Nevada. Let me see if we can zoom in on that. We don't have any good radar coverage out in that area, but this looks like a very strong storm. Let me get my bearings here. This is going to be Las Vegas, 
Area 51 is kind of right in here. This appears to be on the old nuclear testing range right there, pretty much between the Nevada test site, Mercury, and the Tonopah test range. So that's quite a storm, and, you know, I worked on that range many years ago. These storms with these highly sheared anvils and large depth, those were pretty rare. So this is probably quite photogenic. The Pacific Northwest, free of that severe heat wave we had last week, but hot conditions continue. Uh, 93 at Boise, 99 at Lewiston, and 95 at Yakima. A little bit cooler in Seattle with 78. However, Portland is still up at 85 degrees. Red flag warnings continue in southern Oregon. East of the Cascades, including Bend, Lakeview, and Burns, due to continued hot conditions, the risk of wildfires from lightning from some of these storms here. All of central and eastern Washington, far northern Idaho, under air quality alerts due to this residual wildfire smoke. And we head out into Alaska, most of the region under high pressure. However, one little upper level low associated with this pocket of cold air kind of close to southeastern Alaska. Gale warnings are in effect for the Bering Sea due to strong southerly winds up to 35 knots. That's going to be in this area right there. And flood watches continue for the southwest Brooks Range down to the Koyukuk Forest, basically right in there. That rain has not quite ended and water levels in the rivers remain high. That will continue through the weekend. In Canada, Extensive advisories and warnings for wildfire smoke all through British Columbia, northwestern Alberta, and parts of the Northwest Territories. Some of those plots reflecting the presence of wildfire smoke. In Ontario, this strong wound up system producing some of the first wind warnings around Georgian Bay. They're expecting winds up to 55 miles an hour for today. All of South and Southeastern Ontario, including Toronto under a special weather statement for winds today, which could gust 40 to 55 miles an hour. In Quebec, a severe thunderstorm warning for the Val d'Or area. We did have a storm earlier capable of producing strong winds and dime-sized hail. So let's take a look at those temperatures. This is what we were expecting this afternoon, 50s way up north, and of course the usual 90s and even 100s further south. There's the low temperatures tomorrow down into the 30s out in western North Dakota where we have that freeze warning in effect, 30s and 40s across the rest of the northern plains. And for the rest of the weekend, here's the highs for tomorrow, more 50s up north, and most of this cold air mass will spread into the northeastern U.S. gradually. We're looking for highs in the 60s and 70s on Sunday up there in New York and Pennsylvania, and just a very meager push of cold air south, but, you know, we'll take what we can get. 101 for Phoenix, still boiling out there in the deserts, and it will get worse as we go into midweek, up to 105 by Tuesday. This is when temperatures peak out there, picking up to the 90s in Texas once again, more heat for Dallas, San Antonio, up to 95 degrees by Thursday. So we put the maps into motion. That's what we're looking at for this evening and for tomorrow. This cold front advances into the northeastern U.S. This is a anafront setup. You can see all that precipitation back behind the cold front. There is going to be a slight risk for tomorrow. Again, from Portland to New York City, Philadelphia. Marginal risk further south through Virginia into the western Carolinas along that frontal boundary and all the way into Atlanta as well. There will be a chance of an isolated tornado across southern New England and in the New York City, Poughkeepsie, Philadelphia area. But much like today, the main risk is gusty outflow winds. As we go into Sunday, the remainder of the cold air continues clearing the northeastern U.S. We're looking for highs in the 60s and 70s. The leading edge moves into the deep south into Texas near Interstate 10, but it's heavily modified highs remaining in the 80s. And we are looking for that significant drying in the southwestern U.S. as that monsoon temporarily shuts down, although we are getting to the very end of the season. Very weak cold front moving into the western U.S. Not much definition on that, but very likely we're going to see an increase once again in some of the precipitation across Colorado, the Four Corners, New Mexico going into midweek as that ridge begins breaking down. 
Yeah, it looks like another burst of cold air on its way south. Much like the previous one, mostly affecting the northeastern U.S. and the Midwest, and very little, just the scraps down south. And the very end of the period, just not very much going on. Looks kind of rainy down there in Florida. Kind of a early fall precipitation event along that stationary front. And another front comes in from the Pacific into Oregon, Washington. And that's about it for this forecast. And that will be it for this episode of Forecast Lab. I've got to go ahead and head upstairs and take care of my family. Uh, there's some sort of bug going around. Could be COVID, actually. I'm talking about 100, 101 fever, upper respiratory symptoms, a lot of weakness, that kind of thing. I'm not really sure what variants we have going around. The COVID tests are negative, but of course that is inconclusive. So far, I don't have any symptoms. So if I'm not here on Wednesday or Tuesday, you know, you'll know what happened. But I've been, you know, very careful wearing a mask up there. And so I'm playing it safe and hopefully I'll be here healthy for you all on Tuesday or on Monday for the supporters. Special thanks to Dr. Yuri Mom. Welcome to the program and thank you very much for that support. Also, again, thanks to Nicholas Halifka. Michael Riley, Jeff Lutz, and the others who have contributed. All right, hope you all have a great weekend. Take care, and we'll see you here in a couple days. Bye-bye.